Imagine creatures that have been around since the time of the dinosaurs and even before and are still alive today. The velvet worm, a bizarre little predator that traps prey with sticky goo. The lungfish, a fish that can breathe air and survive in drought by burrowing into mud. And the nautilus, a living fossil that's been around for over 500 million years. These are ancient creatures still alive today. Some of the most incredible creatures on Earth have been around for millions of years. The eerie monkfish with its fishing pole lure to a creature living in freezing waters with a thousand year lifespan. And the gharial with its unique snout designed for catching fish. These are ancient creatures still alive today. Well, this is a strange looking creature. It's called the velvet worm. These odd but cute little creatures have been around for over 500 million years. Their appearance hasn't changed much. If you've ever seen one, you might think it's a cross between a worm and an insect, but it's neither. It's in its own branch on the tree of life. And I think I get what makes them sort of cute. It's their soft velvety bodies. They almost look like little fairy tale creatures. Velvet worms are typically about two to 10 centimeters long and have segmented bodies with tiny legs that allow them to move slowly across the forest floor. They don't look like it, but they also hunt in, in a very interesting way. They don't chase down their prey. Instead, they shoot out this sticky adhesive substance from glands near their heads to trap smaller animals. Then they walk over to their prey and eat it alive, using their sharp mandibles to chew through the body. The adhesive can be so strong that the worm can capture animals several times its size. The reason that they've survived this long, seemingly unchanged, is partly thanks to their incredibly efficient hunting style. They found a niche that works perfectly well for them, so there's no need to change. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Lungfish are some of the oldest creatures to have ever lived on Earth, dating back more than 400 million years. These fish are often considered the closest living relatives to the first creatures that made the transition from water to land. They've evolved a set of highly specialized traits that allow them to survive in environments where other fish just wouldn't. Lungfish can breathe air. A fish that can breathe air. How wild is that? While most fish use gills to extract oxygen from water, lungfish have both gills and lungs, so they can survive in low oxygen environments like stagnant ponds or dried up riverbeds. And when there's a drought, some species of lungfish can even bury themselves in mud and enter this almost hibernation state, breathing air through their lungs until water returns. Gee, I wonder why these things have survived for hundreds of millions of years. While other fish species may have been wiped out during mass extinctions, lungfish have adapted to survive, making them one of the longest living groups of fish. So cheers to them. The Nautilus is one of the most iconic creatures from the deep. When you look at paintings of ancient sea life amongst all the scary extinct monsters, you'll usually see these things as well, but they're still around. The Nautilus has been swimming the oceans for over 500 million years. If you've ever seen one, you'll immediately recognize the spiral shell-like structure that it's famous for. The Nautilus belongs to an ancient group of cephalopods, which also includes modern squids, octopuses, and cuttlefish. But unlike its more evolved relatives, the Nautilus hasn't changed much. It's sometimes called a living fossil, as it's considered one of the oldest species still around today. These things have survived through massive extinction events, and one of the reasons it's managed to stick around for so long is that it's very adaptable in its diet. Nautiluses are opportunistic feeders, scavenging on dead fish and crustaceans and smaller marine life. They're also known to hunt smaller fish using their tentacles, but that shell is just beautiful, and a big part of that is because it follows the Fibonacci sequence, a pattern that appears a lot, from the branching of trees to the arrangement of petals and flowers. Sturgeons are massive fish that have been around for more than 200 million years. They were here long before the dinosaurs and have survived through major shifts in the Earth's climate and environment. They're hard to miss. They can grow over 12 feet long and weigh up to 1,500 pounds. They're one of the largest species of fish alive today. Sturgeon are also known as living fossils. They have armored bodies covered in bony plates, and their long, pointy snouts are perfect 
or sifting through mud and sand in search of food. Unlike many other fish, sturgeons don't have teeth. Instead, they have a specialized structure known as barbells on their snouts, which they use to sense their prey. Sturgeons are bottom feeders, relying on their sense of touch and smell to find things like worms and small fish, again, in the mud down there. They also spend a significant part of their lives in fresh water, but then move to salt water to breed, which makes their life cycle very unique. The tuatara is also called a living fossil, and for good reason. Native only to New Zealand, this reptile is the last surviving member of an ancient order called Rhynchocephalia, a group that lived over 200 million years ago. Despite resembling a lizard, tuataras are not actually lizards, but they belong to the same reptile family. Their closest relatives went extinct a long time ago. And what makes the tuatara even more fascinating is its unique physiology. For example, they have a third eye on the top of their head. It's not very noticeable, but it is there, and it's known as a parietal eye, which is sensitive to light and helps regulate their circadian rhythm. It doesn't work like their other eyes, but it is pretty cool that it's there, and it connects them to more ancient reptiles when their ancestors had more complex ways of sensing things. Another fun fact, the tuatara is incredibly slow growing, and they can live for over 100 years. Monkfish, also known as anglerfish, are a bizarre and ancient species that have been lurking in the deep oceans for over 100 million years. They have a very unique and eerie appearance with their flat, wide bodies, their enormous mouths, the sharp teeth, the bumpiness. Monkfish just look like something from another time. They live in deep water where there's not much light, so they've developed an interesting survival tactic. They have a lure on their heads, a fleshy filament that they use to attract prey. The lure is similar to a fishing pole, and the monkfish dangles it in front of its mouth to attract smaller fish. When a potential meal gets too close, the monkfish strikes, using its large mouth to engulf the prey whole. These fish are excellent predators, capable of swallowing fish much larger than themselves. They're also super adaptable. They can live in all kinds of depths and at different parts of the ocean, so this mix of flexibility and clever hunting has helped them stick around as long as they have. Antarctic sponges are another incredible example of creatures that have survived for a very long time in some of the harshest environments on Earth. These sponges can live for hundreds, even thousands of years making them some of the oldest living creatures in the animal kingdom. So why do they live so long? Well, it's a result of the frigid environment, which slows their metabolism. In fact, some Antarctic sponges have been found to grow less than one millimeter per year, meaning they can take thousands of years to reach their full size. They're found in the icy waters of Antarctica, surviving in a region where very few other species can handle the freezing temperatures and the constant darkness. Something else very strange about these things is they don't rely on sunlight for energy. Instead, they feed on microscopic plankton and bacteria that drift through the water. Antarctic sponges are also super important for the health of the ecosystem. They provide habitats for other organisms, and they play an important role in recycling nutrients. The gharial is a large crocodile-like reptile native to the rivers of the Indian subcontinent. They're the crocodiles that you've seen in nature documentaries, and you're like, oh wait, what the hell is that thing? It's not, it doesn't look like a normal crocodile. With that long, thin snout, it's definitely one of the most unique members of the crocodile family. Garyls have been around for over 200 million years, surviving through climate changes and massive shifts in the Earth's ecosystems. They're specialized fish eaters. Their weird snouts are just perfectly suited for catching fish. They use their sharp teeth to grab slippery fish with incredible speed. Unlike other crocodiles, garyls don't need to chase down their prey on land. They just lurk underwater, waiting for the right moment to strike. Their snouts make them highly adaptable for life in rivers where they often swim with their bodies submerged while keeping only their eyes and nostrils above water. Unfortunately, despite how ancient these things are, the gharial is now critically endangered, with only a few hundred of them left. Horseshoe crabs are another ancient creature that's been around for over 450 million years. Now, horseshoe crabs aren't true crabs. They're actually more closely related to spiders and scorpions, which is odd. These things have a hard horseshoe-shaped exoskeleton. 
and long tails that they use to steer and maintain balance in the ocean. They live in shallow coastal waters where they feed on small creatures like worms and algae. What's truly nuts about horseshoe crabs, though, is their unique bodily fluids. It contains a substance called hemolymph, which is used in a special test for bacterial contamination in medical devices and vaccines. This test is critical for making sure pharmaceutical products are safe, so horseshoe crabs have still found a way to be helpful after hundreds of millions of years. And their BLOOD, it's also blue, so that's pretty cool. As you can imagine though, because it's so useful in modern medicine, it's also quite sought after. And over-harvesting has put horseshoe crab populations at risk, making them another ancient species that may not be around forever. The coelacanth is perhaps the most famous living fossil of them all. These deep sea fish were thought to have gone extinct with the dinosaurs around 65 million years ago. But in 1938, a fisherman off the coast of South Africa pulled up a specimen, shocking the scientific world. These things are the definition of living fossils. They've barely changed since they first appeared over 400 million years ago. These guys have very unusual fins. Unlike most fish, coelacanths have paired lobed fins, which are believed to be the ancestors of the limbs that would eventually evolve in land animals. These fins are highly flexible, and when the coelacanth swims, it moves its fins in this graceful alternating motion, almost like it's walking on the seafloor. This adaptation has led scientists to believe that coelacanths could hold the key to understanding how some of the earliest creatures on Earth made that transition from water to living on land. Coelacanths are incredibly rare, living at depths of 200 to 2,000 feet in the Indian Ocean. With all that said though, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.